but <laughs> all right sorry on a more serious side of things um do you guys have any questions or things you want to talk about specifically or shall i go to the theme of next week no nothing nothing off the top of my head okay so theme of next week is um uh, bending your spine. So I, we spend so much time, I spend so much time worrying about people's spines that sometimes I forget how important it is to actually get movement in the spine. And it is really important to have movement in the spine. So we do, and, and Pilates, I think, really makes us think about stabilizing, right? And holding steady and strong and stiff in the spine. Whereas uh, we don't think as much about the mobility. We're so concerned with the stability of the spine a lot of the times. And that's appropriate when somebody has an injury to the spine, it's appropriate to be thinking about it. It's appropriate to be thinking about it anyway, but we also need to remember that we, our spines are, the reason that our spine is made of so many little bones is so, what? So that we could have disc problems? No, it's, <laughs> so that we can move it, right? Yeah. Otherwise, and that's why we have so many little bones and joints is to give us mobility. And so we want to be able to use that mobility that we have, right? Not just always keep the spine super stiff. So those of you who have been working with me for, all of you guys have been working with me for a long time. So you know how to keep somebody's back safe, um, and you also know loaded versus unloaded, and it come, a lot of it comes down to that, loaded versus unloaded flexion of the spine, but also extension of the spine. So um, maybe, let me, the way that I think I'm gonna approach it, and I haven't really thought it all the way through yet with the classes, but is just to remind them that spines are built for mobility and so we want to keep them mobile, but there's a safe way to do it and a not safe way to do it. And the safe way to do it, even at, it, with somebody who doesn't have a back injury as time goes on, I would say even people in their forties, right? There's no reason that we need to be, there's no reason if somebody is uninjured and in their forties or fifties that they can't be doing some rolling up and down their spine um, and some loaded forward bending and things like that. There's no reason why they can't. But if they go to repetitive workouts where that's what they're doing all the time and not doing enough strength work to support and balance it, then that can actually lead to a problem even in a really healthy spine. So uh, there's no reason in my mind that they should be super focused on rolling all the time, but there's no reason why they can't do some. And so for, our, for your brains, I think it's good to think about what are the positives or why, well, first of all, what are the contraindications? You guys are, I think, very clear on what the contraindications are for, for spinal motion, right? So if we were going to talk about spinal loaded flexion, contraindicated for whom is spinal loaded flexion? Osteoporosis, dysfunction. Uh, yeah. um, Analysis. Those are the two main ones. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sen is there another one? Osteoporosis and disc dysfunction are really spinal loaded flexion contraindicated. Those are the ones, the main ones. And then what about spinal extension contraindication? Stenosis. Yeah. Stenosis is one. What's another? Um, spondy. Spondylolisthesis usually because why? Because what are most 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 spondylolisthesis? Spondylolisthesis doesn't say which way the vertebra is sliding. If we called it more specifically anterior lolisthesis or retrolisthesis, then we would describe it more. And because most people go anterior, right, the extension would push it more anterior. So that's why, but some people will have a retrolisthesis and then it would be the opposite, <laughs> just to complicate things. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So um, it's good to know which thesis, less thesis we're talking about. Um, but spondylolisthesis typically is the anterior. A lot mm -hmm. of times the clients don't even know. A lot of times the clients don't even know. And what is a good way to find out? You know, you could just do it and find out that you could find out for yourself with a client. No. I always ask for their MRI. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to ask for their MRI. The other way is with somebody with a spondylolisthesis, or I should, I should backtrack. With somebody with an extension contraindication, when do the symptoms come on? Typically. When they do. Immediately. Extension. Immediately. Yeah. So if you put somebody in extension and they're starting to have symptoms, then you won't put them in extension, <laughs> right? And the nice thing about those, the extension contraindicated is typically if you do it once or twice even and they have discomfort and you take them out of position, uh, they don't have a lasting discomfort and you haven't really caused an issue. If you say, oh, let's work through this pain, they will hurt the next day too. But if you say, oh, that must be because of the spondylolisthesis or because of the stenosis, let's not do that specific exercise for you or let's change it or let's modify it or whatever. But somebody with a loaded flexion contraindication, do they feel discomfort when they're doing exercises typically? No, the next day. Next day. So that's, that's more worrisome. So if I was gonna test somebody, I would try extending and see if they have any discomfort. And if they do, then I wouldn't keep doing extension. And if they don't, then I could keep doing extension. Yeah. And then um, who's contraindicated for rotation? The set syndrome. Right, so extension, I'm sorry, we should have finished extension. Extension also includes facet joints, but mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of times it's rotation in one direction will also be a facet joint issue. Yeah, so um, you might avoid rotation. Where else do we avoid end range rotation? Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is end range rotation. Say that again, Genevieve, sorry. Um, disc dysfunction also. Disc dysfunction also, end range rotation can be difficult. Um, it should be okay when they're getting better if they can keep their spine totally neutral, but probably not to end range, mm -hmm. which is interesting because a lot of people with this dysfunction, what do they want to do? Have you noticed? They want to twist. <laughs> they, and they want to do the one, right? Laying on their back, taking their knees across and they want to feel the crack, right? That, mm. <laughs> it's one of my pet peeves about people with disc injuries in their backs. They always want to rotate and crack. I'm like, no, stop rotating and cracking. Yeah, so be wary, be careful of that. But then, okay, so we have all, we know what those contraindications are. Is there anybody contraindicated really for unloaded flexion? If we, there's not really, unless it's somebody post-fusion, right? Who's still post-fusion. Um, unloaded flexion within reason, I would say. Those levels are not going to move, right? Once somebody's fused, those levels aren't going to move. So they're moving above and below those levels. So you're not going to push into a heavy flexion, but you can still do an unloaded flexion for them. Yes. Um, but not directly post-op, but they probably won't be doing Pilates directly post-op or they'll be under strict op supervision of a doctor or physical therapist or somebody who can give you some guidance on there, I would hope or they will have the notes with them and they can give them to you or what the doctor said to do or not do. So they can give them to you so you know what to do or not do. But otherwise, there's really nobody that's contraindicated for unload, unloaded flexion. And I really believe that it's a good thing to be doing unloaded flexion. Also, you can think about this. If it's somebody who has a disc injury in the cervical spine, what we're worried about their neck and loaded flexion of the head and neck, we're not as worried about flexion in the lumbar spine, right? Or in the thoracic spine for that matter. 
So the, if you know where the dysfunction is, you can work, you want to work the other parts of the spine around it. So for example, somebody with stenosis, who tend to be our older clients, what's happening in their upper back? Kyphosis usually. And, but we don't want to leave them in kyphosis, but we just said that extension is contraindicated, but extension <laughs> isn't contraindicated in the thoracic spine. Extension is contraindicated only in the lumbar spine. So coming into neutral and, and teaching them to support and hold neutral so they can get extension above it at the thoracic spine is a good thing, right? And using all your tricks and tools to do that. So maybe doing that, um, using, I use the roller a lot to help. We, you redo the thoracic over the arc or the barrel a lot, or even over the roller I've been doing a lot since people don't have their arcs and barrels so much. Um, or even over the squishy ball, we've gone over that a few times. So we are still extending people, but not um, in the area of injury or concern. So, yeah. Question, <laughs> going back to rotation. So I have a lot of clients who have osteoporosis, know they have osteoporosis, and they play golf like three, four days a week. Um, like, so yeah. full range, yeah. <laughs> twist in their spine. <laughs> And, you know, it, it, if I tell them not to do it, they don't listen, they don't care. I'm not a doctor. What do I know? So um, with those clients, I, I always avoid loaded flexion, but I don't always avoid the rotation because I almost feel like I need to work them in the opposite direction from their swing to try to keep them balanced. Are there things that I shouldn't do with them and like, with that rotation work that I'm doing, or is it okay to keep going? I mean, they're not going to change, so. No, <clears throat> no. And um, so here's the other piece of what the topic is. It's um, flexing your spine and being strong enough to do it, or moving your spine and being strong enough to do it. I forgot what my exact title was, sorry. <laughs> I had to go back to my exact title. But so that golf is a great example of strangely the people who play the most golf are the people who really shouldn't be playing golf at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird phenomenon we have because it's our elder clients who are playing golf, most of whom either have stenosis or osteoporosis, right? I would say 50% of golf players have stenosis or osteoporosis, right? <laughs> so you would think that we shouldn't be rotating. Now, the interesting thing about it is that for the stenosis, it's actually not that horribly bad because the rotation, we don't have a lot of rotation in our lumbar spine. So the rotation, like physiologically and anatomically, we don't have much rotation in the lumbar spine. So the rotation down below is actually pelvis hips more. And then, so it's the thoracic and the shoulders that are actually getting more rotation, which is okay for stenosis, usually because stenosis is not usually thoracic spine. It's not great. And disc, because disc is not usually thoracic spine, but it's not really good for osteoporosis. Right. So, and, and they're doing that with great force. So my advice would be, yes, you need to strengthen and stabilize and support. And you want to strengthen them a lot so that they don't end up grinding on their bones or crashing their bones together. So working on side bending, side sit-ups, um, that's sort of my go around for the rotation a lot of the time. Because with every side bend, there is a certain amount of vertebral rotation that's occurring. So you do get some rotation. And then you can do things where you're rotating just not to end range. I would not force the end range and, and they're, you're right, they're going to go play golf and they're going to do it anyway, but you, you wouldn't want to be the place where that injury happens. And some of them are going to end up with little fractures and they're going to know it's from golf and that's just the way they want to, that's their choice. Yeah. You just don't want to end up with that in your clinic. So, or in your studio. So you don't want to, you don't want to like, you know, our twist with a stick, you don't want to jam into end range, but you can definitely work across an end range and into end dish range. And you, if you're using, making them use these muscles to do that work, 
you're actually strengthening all around those rotational, all those little rotational muscles around the spine and around the, in the abdominals. So you're helping them. Yeah, just, uh, just avoid that end, end range and high velocity under your watch is what I would say. Yeah, but that is a good point. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, that was the basic idea. So when do we, you guys know, I'm sure you could list off to me what positions are unloaded flexion, right? That we call unloaded flexion. In supine, what do we have that we call unloaded flexion? Um, coccyx curl and bridge roll up. Mm -hmm. Coccyx curl, bridge roll up. So I, I think that's, that's why I love them so much because they can really um, flex the spine. And then on the other end of that is upper ab curl if it's not osteoporosis, yeah. So upper ab curl for anybody who's not a neck injured or osteoporosis, but I've actually even been really trying to teach my clients to super support the neck. So brace fingers interlace behind the neck, squeeze inward onto the neck and really lengthen so that they get this bracing of the neck. And there, I feel like if they, if you know that somebody can maintain that, even if they've had a neck injury, you can have them work the rib cage now keeping the support of the head neck and get that flexion in an upper ab curl so this, to some extent um, you could have that too so i think um depending it all depends not not somebody who's acute obviously but you could get that so we have in supine we'd have coccyx curl bridge roll up and we could potentially have upper abdominal curl and those would be sort of our flexion based exercises there. If we go to quadruped, we have the same, right? Coccyx curl. We have the full cat, which we could do. And um, that would be flexion. And we have cat to child's pose. We have any of the cats actually, and then cat to child's pose. And then cat to me is the same, is a modification on push through on the Cadillac, right? So seated, push through seated, is very loaded, but you could modify that to cat. That's actually my preferred modification than like straddling and trying to keep the back flat the whole time. So I use cats a lot on the Cadillac and I've been using them with the roller too now uh, for all these virtual sessions, hands on the roller, rolling out to cat, rolling back up to um, vertical or to child's pose. So yeah, Allegra. Um so just going back to the unloaded flexion, and I, I knew this at one time, but now I'm forgetting. Um, you know how if your legs are on, or your buns are on the roller and you're supported and the legs are up in the air, that's not technically considered loaded flexion. I mean, it's not loaded flexion, right? No. No. But it's, not. It's, it's, it's flexion of the lower flexion. spine. But it's not yeah. loaded because your legs are up no. in the air. There's no weight, there's no force upon them. There's no load of force, yeah, on yeah. along the spine. That's compressed. You want to think of loaded fresh flexion as a place where the spine is becoming compressed. So okay. if you go butt over um, head, like over uh, roll over, hip ups, jackknife, all those, that's a lot of load on the spine and flexion from gravity. Okay. If you go, um, but if you go hips on the roller, it's just like you're wedging the hips up into coccyx curl, basically, or into a bit of a bridge roll. Okay. So yeah. No, I, okay. Okay. I was just double checking because um, a client asked me in a Pilates class, and that's pretty much the answer that I gave them. But I that I I don't know. I was doubting myself for some. Then reason. you yeah. You know, then you start you. questioning. Okay. Did I miss something? Hmm. What, yeah. Why are they asking that question? Yeah. 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 No, so there's not a force of gravity that's creating an external extra load on the body in that position. In fact, the reason I like that coccyx curl and that curling position is for the length. Remember, we were talking about lengthening the spine all the time. I still think whether it's loaded flexion or not loaded flexion, that thinking about creating as much space between the vertebra as possible is really good or trying to get as much space. Even in the child's pose, I don't really love child's pose, to be honest, I love active child's pose. I like 
reaching the arms in the opposite direction, working hard to pull the belly back so that I'm getting this opening of the vertebra along, I can picture the vertebra just kind of pulling slightly apart to get into that flexion. And it's not that they're gonna really pull apart. What for me, that what that feels like to me is that we're getting just a little more space for those discs. It's, um, and, and I find that if you're gonna roll up and down, that there are clients where it's appropriate to roll up and down. And I've been doing that in my super strong class with my non-injured in that super strong class, we do some rolling almost every session. Not a lot, because I don't think a whole class is and loaded flexion is ever that appropriate. But um, the cueing for me is always finding length and then going, right? Not ever squash and roll. You don't, that, that load, that just dropping into the roll down is so muscularly inactive that there's all, the only choice you have is to compress. Whereas if I lift up hollow and then take myself into that role, I really find that there's space and maybe it's because the muscles are working to pull apart a little bit more. I find that space and I can roll down through the spine and then roll my way back upward. Um, with that length in mind, just feels so much better. So I would encourage that in all places. So child's pose, you're thinking of that same thing, arms reaching forward, belly pulling backwards. So creating length and distance between those joints and the vertebra, right? Um, so child's pose, our elephant or the downward dog is our elephant. Um, where else do we have? And then we have, well, it's cat, the cat. So we talked about on all fours, we have the cats with your hands on the roller or on the Cadillac or on the chair, or um, we have the whole quadruped, um, like the knee stretch series on the reformer, which I've mimicked by putting shins on the roller and doing it that way um, for mat stuff or virtual stuff. So all of those are flexing the spine. And then we have some stuff like uh, around the world, the elephant around the world, which is really nice So you're going, from hips up, rolling forward to clank, pressing back in plank, hips go up, like circling around, because that's really creating like an undulation through the spine within the motion. So it's really nice because you're getting some flexion, some neutral, more flexion, and you're then switching that direction. So you're getting kind of this wave through the spine, um, challenging strength and also increasing mobility. So um, the ones, and then for rotation, like I said, is the side sit-up series and side planking and side sit-ups that really seem to get the most, um, I like the most for strengthening around, strengthening for rotation without having to actually rotate. Um, and then you could, what, what would be, Allison, really interesting, maybe you're doing some of this already, I didn't even ask you, but some of those really small, um, like laying on your back, the knees falling to one side and back, knees falling to one side and back. Those could be really interesting because they can really help um, get those little muscles around the spine to fire if, if the person can understand what you're trying to do. So some of those little knees just falling off a little and back, knees falling off a little and back can really help get those intrinsic muscles, shut down the bigger ones too. Yeah. yeah. Would it also work um, to have, so like start them with the feet on the bar, like if they're on the reformer and drop the knees over and like really try to keep it small there before you have them in like the uh, uh, tabletop position doing it where that it's closed yeah. chain as opposed to open chain? Yeah. In fact, on the mat too, I would recommend doing closed chain feet down first and then coming back. So just the knees falling off and the coming back. And you could even start with one knee and the other knee yeah. um, if it felt like it was challenging. Yeah. Um, so, but those are great ways to get the intrinsic muscles going. And if we, if we think back to um, diagonal muscles in the spine, multifidus comes in there. So firing multifidus is great. Multifidus fires in that pointed dog position, opposite arm leg, and it fires in um, walking type lunging, one leg front, one leg back. 
and it fires in side lying if your knees are down and you try and lift the feet up. You remember that exercise? You guys oh, remember yeah. that exercise? Okay. Yeah, knees down, knees down, bent about 30 degrees and feet coming up rather than, and it has a funny look on her face. She's not remembering that one. It, is it, do you have to do both feet up or just one like crazy clam? Um, you do this. So I bend a bit. And then I keep the knees together and I lift feet. Yeah. And he, this is working my right multifidus to bring both feet up here. I can feel it pop right out underneath my fingers um, back here, just alongside my spine. That's a really nice isolation for multifidus. So the reason we go after multifidus is because it goes diagonally from below to two or three levels above. Uh, from transverse process to spinous process inward. Yeah, so they're diagonal stabilizers. So if we're talking about straight, and when we're talking about strengthening for rotation and spinal movement, we want to stabilize those little muscles. So the little spinalis muscles, um, rotatoris, rotatoris, the little rotator muscles that run diagonally. We have transversi muscles, which go from one transverse process to the next transverse process. There's little tiny guys in there, or girls <laughs> in there, tiny little muscles that really help stabilize the spine that we want to be working them too, not just our big deep muscles. So those little motions that we do, and they're very, they're really ingrained in a lot of what we do in Pilates already. So thinking about that and then you know, if we were doing those roll downs, that would be also something to consider in that lengthening that I'm just not putting everything on stretch and rolling down. I'm really going up, activating, activating. So I've got musculature active front and back so that I can get that control to just stop somewhere along the way, right? Anywhere I want, because I have this control through not just those big muscles, but the small ones. Right, to give me stability and support. Um, I have a quick question about the multifidus exercise. Yeah. Um, do you try to keep the hips stacked with that one or does it matter if there's a little bit of movement? I think, um, a good question. What do I do? The pelvis, I'm wearing so many clothes, can't see what I'm doing. But the pelvis, I'm stacked here. And then as my feet come up, I'm not rolling um, forward. So I'm, but my knees are not exactly even. So, mm. and I don't think it matters that much. Um, I have to get to here to get, feel like it's, well, I can feel it kick on right away. But as I get up here, I really feel it kick on more. So I like coming up to this point, but that does, my hips are still stacked here. I haven't rolled forward, but my knees are a little bit not even. So there's your non-answer. They're almost even, but not totally even. <laughs> <clears throat> what do you get when you do that yeah it, it feels um it just feels very different to me like it's just a little adjustment from the it feels like that left hip slipping a little bit forward the top hip slipping just a little bit forward and then I feel more back engagement I think um, and then versus when I keep them like really stacked and I'm just focusing on move, lifting the feet, I still feel engagement, but it's it's like in a slightly different place. So I guess I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we'd have to stick some needles in you and see what you're actually firing, Genevieve. <laughs> and you did, of course, what if you do it on the other though. side? What if you do it on the other side? That's, is that gonna mess you up or are you gonna be okay doing it on this side? 
So I, when I was trying it, I feel it more if I'm in a lifted position, like up on my elbow, as opposed to being down, like supporting my head like that. But I don't know if it's because I'm feeling different muscles. Is there a different? Okay. Yes, there's a lot of different muscles that can kick in. Okay. Okay, so one thing I would say is if I bring my knees too far up, I don't get it as much as if I keep them down. So there's one little piece. There I get it on really well. What am I doing? I'm not letting this hip go forward. If I go forward, I start doing something else. So we're pulling this back and keeping that top hip stacked to get it on. And my knees are not too far up. So this is probably where I like my knees to be the best. Um, does that help Genevieve at all? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so I would not let this hip bone fall forward. Um, and then Allison, up here. Okay, I think your hand's too high. Take mm -hmm. your hand lower towards your pelvis. So just above the crest of the pelvis and okay. see if you can then find that. So I would go right to your spine, just above the crest of the pelvis and then slide just a tiny bit off the spine and then see if you can feel it right down there. See what you feel right down there. Okay. Kim, did you have a question too? I'm just not sure where I'm feeling it. Mm -hmm. I see where you are. In my, in my waist, I guess, in my obliques. Yeah, so take your hand to, to the back, put your fingers on your back, on the spine, and go right down to the pelvis, and then just slide up the high side of your back, so the left of your spine, yeah just slightly left of your spine. Mm. Maybe, yeah. They sh what you should feel is like something just activates underneath your fingers. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. Small muscle. Yeah. Allison, did you get it? No. <laughs> Okay. Kind of. So here's the other way to here's the other way to feel your multifidus oh. is to come up to standing. Genevieve knows this, <laughs> but if you take a stride stance, I'm going to start taking layers off to show you. I'm going to end up with no shirt on soon. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So stride stance. My hand goes back on the back leg side. So my Right leg is back, so my fingers are, I go to my spine and I go to the right of my spine. I can already feel muscles on. If I'm on my toes on the back foot, I can feel a little bulge on that right side. And if I wiggle around a little bit, you'll feel that bulge. Like I, if I flex and extend, you should be able to feel so that bulge going on and off. If I lower the heel, and lean back, weight back to the back foot, I don't feel it. If I push off with that back foot, I should feel those muscles, a muscle coming on underneath my fingers. As I push up through the toes and the back leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I think Can so. you get it now? Just above my glutes, right? Um, it's, it's above your pelvis. If you found your PSIS, go up from your PSIS into your back. Here-ish. Can you see? <laughs> okay. 
Okay, back into the camera, can you? Back up so I can see closer. Back up your bottom, bring your butt to my face. Okay, so now you're on your pelvis. That's your PSIS, right? Yeah. So go up to your meaty back. Higher, yep, right about there. Okay. A little lower, I would say. Yeah, right there. Okay. Now try it. Oh yeah, as soon as I moved, I could feel it. <laughs> yes, exactly, that's it. Okay, all right, okay. All right, now, now I know where I should be looking. <sighs> Okay, I feel it now. You feel it now? Okay, and then what Genevieve and I were talking about is that top hip, that top ASIS shouldn't fall off in front if you want to feel multivitous staying on. There's no way I could explain this to most of my clients. <laughs> no, but you could get them in that stride stance and you could poke the muscle yourself. Yes, yes. And you could say, do you feel, th I feel this right here. Do you feel this? And you could touch them and then have them touch themselves. And so it, it's a little easier. There's less words yeah. you can just do, do it. I mean, maybe not on Zoom, but. No. <gasps> yeah. But for you guys to know, so those are, that's a great stabilizer of the spine. So whatever we're gonna do, whether it's when we go into flexing and working, we wanna have those muscles kicking in to give us support. So again, that you can strengthen that muscle by working in stride stance and lunge type positions. You can strengthen that muscle in quadruped is a great way to point it the leg out the back, pulsing upward. That's, uh, that makes that muscle work, the multifidus. So that's a great, we think of it as a glute exercise, but it's actually also really strengthening. Yep, that's it, Kim, really strengthening that multifidus and giving us support for multifidus there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then if you remember, multifidus is um, part of our core, right? Our deep abdominals in the front, diaphragm, pelvic floor, multifidus. Those are really the core muscles or the, the ones that really create the most stabilization for our spine. Are, are those all in conjunction with each other? So, so yeah. Yeah, any? So I think, you know, my take, what am I going to do in the class? I'm going to work through all the different, all the different exercises that include flexion. In my back safe classes, I'll do some of all these exercises, coccyx curl, bridge roll up versus bridge plank. I'll do some cats. I'll do some rolling through the spine. Um, I call them circular cats with the roller. I can show you that one. It's fun. I think I do some, you can do some planking, rolling into plank from elephant position. So tucking the tail, rolling the spine forward and unrolling the spine back. Um, I can do, you can do some side bend work, um, whether it's, uh, that's pretty challenging just on the mat, but even just doing some side bend um, work, we were doing it like this. Top leg bend, bottom leg straight, and just trying to get a little bit of a reach up just a little activation even there or you could have them help themselves with the bottom arm and just feeling their obliques come on obliques are easier to feel than multivitus but if i stay stacked i can get them both yeah um so that's one way to work on side on the mat and um, what else prone so then in prone you can work all your extensions right the glutes the upper um, going into extension, you could even do in my in my super strong class. I have them doing swan dives and things like that. Full swimming, those are great spinal extension work. And then the the twisting rotation stuff. Um, this is what we were talking about, Allison. Just having the legs fall off a little with the pelvis square pulling back and the other side pulling back. But and then for more advanced, you can take it to tabletop and back and back for really advanced, you can start working on. I just actually, I'm doing this, um, a mat certification for a small group. Right now, when we got to the hip circles, you know, that's sort of that ultimate 
stability exercise, right? I was proud of myself. I never used to be able to do it very well. And all these math classes have made me strong enough to do it well. So I was like, oh my gosh, I can never do this one right. And I was showing it to them and I go, well, I guess I can now. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, those are, that, that's the super strong people. Yeah, like that. Hi, um, can you show that side sit up thing? Um, I just, I guess maybe just slow down a little bit because I was, is it just like a straight side sit up or are you like kind of rotating a little bit to come? Uh, it's, up? yeah. I was just it's, yeah. trying it. So um, top leg bent over Let me get here. You. And then um, ideally I'd be going directly up, but that's just, so that would be just there. But I was doing a little bit of a rotation back as I came up when I was coming up with both hands. Here, you can be a little more pure on just the reaching up, having that help underneath on that one side. So there oh. we can get that. Yeah. Oh, but maybe a little similar to, um, uh, with the, if you had the roller under there too, maybe like a little side mermaid. -y. Oh, yes. I never even thought about putting the roller on for that exercise. Let's see. I think it's going to be quite challenging. I mean, yeah, it would be really well, hard. Well, this, we could, we could do this, yeah. Yeah. I have to, if I balance well, I could stay. Yeah, I, I can't even do that. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you, Allegra. I like that. That's great. That's maybe great. Not, <laughs> you. Maybe welcome. my super strong class will have to do this next Thursday. Oh, actually Friday, if they show up. And then After adding to that one, Zaina, I okay. did this with, I do a, like a, a class with three women that are, are pretty fit and strong. And um, so we've been doing mermaid with the roller, um, but doing, you know how you do the full mermaid on the Cadillac where you lift the legs? Mm -hmm. You can do yes. that on the roller too. And it's Ooh, pretty one, challenging. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at that, you can. Ooh. Wow. Oh, oh, that's hard. Yeah, they hate Ooh, me. No. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, I have to do the other side now. <laughs> that was very much work that I have to do the other side. And then also if you take the arm over like this as well, it makes it more challenging. So, yeah. Ooh, look at us. You guys are so smart. Bye, Genevieve. Thank you. Say hi to Paul. Okay. <laughs> Is that fun? Yes. <laughs> Why would I lost my balance on that one? <laughs> <laughs> the things that make me happy. Thank you. I love you too. That was so fun. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, I think that's that's basically what I have. Do you guys have questions on anything else or anything? about any of that. Oh, I guess the only other piece that I didn't talk about much was the fascia. Um, keep in mind that, although we don't talk about fascia that much in Pilates, we are doing a lot of fascial stretching too. And the forward bending, actually, uh, I think, and I think I brought this up before, but the, the point of fullest fascial stretch for the back fascial line is this. Toes back, forward bent, head down, flexion. So it's our push through is actually that point of most fascial stretching. So while there is contraindications for that, there are benefits to it too, because it'll keep that fascia much more supple if we can keep it stretched. So the back, the back fascial line is this way. The our, our diagonal fascial line stretch with um, Porta bra, right? These and saw and porta bra, that's stretching all that fascia. So people who can do these things should be doing them, right? Safely and well, but they should be doing them. And so overhead is also back fascial line stretching. And then front fascial line stretching is frozen. You frozen. Those are Line switching, the ones with the 
open in your eyes. Oops, am I frozen still? Yeah. Oh no, you froze. I can hear you though. There you go. You're back. Let's see. That was like Matt. Can you hear me? I can. You're all. Can you see me now? Yep. Yeah. I can see you and hear you. Well, we could. <laughs> that was frozen again. <laughs> That's a better frozen look than the last one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very nice frozen look. We could take a picture of that. <laughs> Which is the perfect lighting too. Yeah, I've oh, there. Matching green fluorescent light. Are you back? Actually? I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> no, this one doesn't work. Um. Okay. Can you? You can see me now, right? Yes. So the what I was trying to say is the extension moments with the swan, that full swan coming up. Like that really helps open that front fascia line. And then if you could add a coming up with an open, then we get a little more of that diagonal. We do this on the big barrel, right? The swan dive where we come up and then we come up with the rotation. Yeah. So those are all things that you are benefiting somebody by adding in, if, if they can do it. Yeah, if it's not contraindicated. And then side bend stretching is great. Arc or barrel are my favorites for that. Uh, that and then mermaid on the chair. I actually really love mermaid on the chair. And I liked, Allison, you showed us the mermaids with the roller. I liked your, I like that as an option, but I like the, I like the barrel or arc there just to give shape so people don't collapse that side. Yeah. And if I can, that's my preference just because it helps. But um, the, the mermaid on the roller was a really nice um, addition to that. Yeah. Or a nice way to mat, mat, mat allies the barrel and arc as much as possible. So my, my client with a really severe scoliosis that I sent you the um, yes. x-ray on, um, loves, loves mermaid on the chair, like yeah. for it. Um, and it's, it's a little freaky because the first time we did it, I was holding her and I could feel the bones moving inside. Mm. Like I thought we were breaking something. I really freaked out for a minute, but she said that it, it nothing feels better. So, oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you're, probably just pulling on stretch some of those muscles that just never get a chance to open because the spine yeah. doesn't go that way. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, awesome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming next Thursday we will not meet. Correct. Um, oh, yeah. Because yeah. You, will be, you will be stuffing yourselves like turkeys and I will not be this year. <laughs> Unless I decide that I want to make a whole Thanksgiving meal myself, which eh, I don't think I'm going to do that this year. It's <laughs> a lot of it's pretty boring. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of unnecessary work to just feed my family whom I feed every night. So <laughs> I know it's done so, in like five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do like maybe we'll get go out to eat or order in to eat to save me even. That would be that would be a good Thanksgiving treat for Mama. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we will miss next Thursday, but then I will see you the following week. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, and and then um, I actually didn't send this to you, Allison, but I could um, from the rehab course. I sent you guys that article about hip rotators. I know you guys were Allegra. You were at our class yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But I sent it to you too, Kim. So if you want, we could take a session and talk about that too. Um, Allison, I could send it to you too. It was a question about how, what's the best stretch to get the hip rotators on stretch. Okay. And um, I didn't want to answer them live in person because there's a lot of, there's been a lot of controversy over the years about what the role of piriformis is when you flex it beyond 90 or not. So um, I did some research and sent them some articles about it. 
Okay. And um, I could forward you that email too, if you're interested. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. that'll be some good Thanksgiving reading and I'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs> good. Take it easy. Bye. 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 See you guys later. Can you stay on for a second, Zaina? Yeah, I can. I have a question for you. Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure that um, I, I feel like, uh, like, right, am I crashing like your uh, office? Oh, no, <laughs> <meeting>? <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Because I know when I we first started that. doing this, it was, you know, it was sort Bye. of like a round. Bye, Lager. It was kind of like a round robin sort of thing where each person was taking turns uh, teaching and stuff. And now it, it seems more like, you know, you're just meeting with your team. And I don't want to, like, you can uninvite me. You won't offend me if this. Oh, gosh, no. Like, we're, okay. we're trying to. Um, and I was actually just talking to Tiziana about this today. because We were trying to make it the round robin thing. People stopped coming. Like, people kept not coming and, it, and then we ended up with a couple teachers teaching stuff that was just not good okay. <laughs> and so so my staff was like I don't want to do that if that's what we're doing and so um I asked about and then I started doing these themes of the week every week with my uh with my student classes to, actually to keep it interesting I figured on zoom and to just and also keeps it more interesting for me if I have to keep changing focus every week and have to think a little harder. And then they wanted to know more about those themes so that if they wanted to, they could do that for their classes too or okay. something. So that's how come that's how come they've become all themed. Okay. But um it's I and I keep asking, you know, um, I know that you're with clients and sometimes pop in late, but I always ask if they have questions about specific clients or topics they want to cover. So okay. if you do, I'm happy to do that. And we are trying to market it or advertise it more um, to get more people in it, but okay. we haven't been that successful yet getting more people on board. But no, I love having you there. It's really okay. nice to, I just get to check to in with you. That it wasn't like, oh, she's still coming. <laughs> oh gosh, no, not at all. I'm, I'm so glad. For you now. But okay, this way. And sorry, I missed last week. I forgot to tell you, I have a, I had my gynecology like yearly appointment, and it had been scheduled for, I don't know, over a year. So, um, anyway, because <laughs> that's what it takes now. But um, okay, yeah. well, thank you. This is really helpful for me. It's good to like yeah. think about things other ways. And um, so, thanks for letting me still come and. Oh gosh, no, I, I, I hope that we can build it so it'll be more people. And I don't actually, I mean, I teach so much that I don't feel like I need to teach. I'm happy to have other people teach things and bring bring their own things in too. Okay. So um, if you have stuff you wanna ask about or wanna bring in, that's okay. great, yeah. Yeah, okay. I will, I can definitely do that. I just, my, the client that I have right before you guys is such a talker and she's super sweet, but she's got 90 million things going on. She's had two ankle surgeries, seven um, breast surgeries because oh she's had God. double mastectomy and, um, and they screwed it up time and time again. And then her body rejected stuff. It was a mess. So anyway, by the time I get done with her, just everything that we have to work through. Um, then we always have to talk about it at the end to explain why we did things a certain way. So I never am done on time, but I'm trying. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, pop in, pop in um, whenever you can. It's just, it's nice to have you. And it's nice to be able to reconnect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, have fun in Switzerland. Enjoy Thank your you. non Thanksgiving, and um, and I will see you in two weeks. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> All right, bye. -bye. bye.